Diaz and welcome back to another video everybody. Today we are testing out the Dragon Touch Vision 3 and the Vision 3 Pro and oh no, my GoPro. We're testing it against the GoPro and the DJI Osmo Action, but we got a little malfunction. We're gonna have to get off the freeway. We're gonna fix this. That's what we're doing. We're checking these bad boys out. <laughs> Look at this guy. What are you doing? Moving to the right. All right, we need to go fix this. Wheat Court was right here. All right, we're gonna get this fixed. We're gonna move down to the park and we're gonna test these guys out. Okay, we finally made it down the hill. <laughs> And uh, needless to say, I have all the action cameras intact. So today's video to recap is not so much a comparison against the GoPro and the DJI Osmo Action, but I really wanna take a closer look at the Dragon Touch Vision 3 that I purchased many, many months ago and I did a video, you can watch it right here. But I just recently got the Dragon Vision Touch 3 Pro and after a first look and a couple trials of this little guy, I'm really starting to like this guy, especially coming in at about $55 US. All right, let's get going with this. A few days ago, it was Independence Day here in the United States. <laughs> and I took advantage of a family barbecue and a swimming day to go and try these different action cameras out. I took my new Vision Touch 3 and I took the Vision Touch 3 Pro. And I really wanted to take a look at this Vision Touch 3 Pro because in the past, this Vision Touch 3 right here, this Dragon Touch, or is it Dragon, Dragon? Dragon Touch Vision 3, I had some troubles with it, especially when I dropped the files into my editing program. I had drop files and essentially just a few days ago, I had similar problems. So I'm not banking on this one to be good, but all the files I pulled from the Dragon Touch Vision 3 Pro were money. And that bodes well for this little guy. So it's not so much looking at the older one, but looking at this newer one. So while all the 4th of July festivities were going on, I took advantage and took all the cameras into the pool. Check this out. Oh, and by the way, don't mind the farmer tan. I mean, come on, it's, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> Check it out. took advantage of my niece's cool bubble machine and I went 1080p 60 frames per second and slowed that down 40%. Check this out. Finally, we cap the night off with some fireworks and check these out. These are uh, some fireworks that my brother-in-law bought. These fireworks are legit. They're going up there like we are at some big function. So that was fun. Let's check this out.
pretty good. So the Dragon Touch cameras didn't do too bad. What I noticed early on, especially when you put it back into the editing software, I noticed the dynamic range wasn't as good on these Dragon Touch cameras. However, you can't expect that much from a $50 camera, especially when these other ones are coming in at well over $300. This bodes well for somebody who's looking to get an action camera, is waterproof, and you can do this on a budget. I think this is the camera, the Dragon Touch 3 Pro. Let's keep going with this. I'm at the park right now. First, I'm gonna simulate a little vlogging and we'll check the video while walking and including some of the sound. I'll do all four cameras, but there are tons of videos out there for the GoPro Hero 7 and the DJI Osmo action. So you can go and check those out if, if you want a more intensive look at each of those cameras. I'm looking more at specifically Dragon Touch Vision 3 Pro. Let's go. I made a rhyme. It's time. Let's do it. Let I, I ran out of words to put. As good as that rhyme was, I have to take a break in this video. In fact, I got to finish this video a little differently than I thought I would. I think I got some chips stuck in my mouth. I definitely did not want to end the video this way, but the rest of the footage, the things that I wanted to test on Dragon Touch Vision 3 and the Dragon Touch Vision 3 Pro, again, that is a mouthful. I'm gonna tell you why I had to stop the video and I'm gonna end this video just a little bit differently. Let's get into it. I'm gonna get into this, but this is just not my video. I just spent the last half hour, why am I complaining? It just, the audio was off. I. My fault. This is why I stopped the video and took a slightly left turn. And it's okay. This actually works out for the video. I wanted to talk more about this new Dragon Touch Vision 3 Pro and my old one, the Dragon Touch Vision 3. So the reason I abandoned the original thought of the video is because I recorded all of this footage, all of these files yesterday, and I was not able to access them. Recorded fine onto both of these machines. I was able to see it inside of the action cameras. And then when I removed the SD cards and put them onto my computer, they were unreadable. And then I even tried, I think it's the XDV or X, VD, that probably doesn't sound right. Anyways, I tried to transfer via Wi-Fi through the app and it actually looked like things were gonna go well and that failed me. And I did a little research yesterday and I did a little bit more testing today. And what I have surmised, surmised, that's a big word for me. What I have figured out is that XC cards are not compatible with these, HC cards are. So extreme capacity versus high capacity. These like high capacity cards. If you're getting something like an SD XC, they may or may not work. Like I said, I was able to successfully record onto these, I just was not able to pull them off easily. When I'm using the HC, the high capacity cards, not a problem. I can put them into my video editing timeline no worries. So everything is good in terms of transfer of files. So that's the plus. That's a tip that I'm going to give you if you're in, if you're looking into getting these cameras. If you know something different, leave me a comment down below and maybe suggest some other ideas on why these or how these can work with different types of SD cards. Or tell me the SD cards that you're using out there that you've been successful with with these types of cameras. I wanna say this, these cameras do not stack up to or cannot be placed side by side with the GoPro Hero 7 Black and or the DJI Osmo Action. Those are 300 plus dollar action cams which come with a lot of sophisticated technology these do not have that technology, but at around $50, they're very serviceable. In fact, what I would suggest is these can be used for a lot of different applications. They can be used as a dash cam. It can be used for home video or even some photos, but honestly, I would actually just pull out my cell phone for those types of things. However, if you're shooting video or you're making films, these are great B and C cameras, second and third cameras. You can place these in unique places, places that you might not put your more expensive cameras. You might not get the best quality of video, but if you're looking for those in-between shots and behind the scenes type of stuff, this might be the ticket for those. If you're new to filmmaking, these are definitely an asset and can be utilized in a lot of different scenarios and fit in a lot of unique places. So I do like these cameras. 
I will say this, I would never buy the Dragon Touch Vision 3 again, but I would recommend buying the Dragon Touch Vision 3 Pro. One is it comes with a touch screen, and two, when I was field testing it, I didn't really have any problems with the camera at all, missing frames like the original camera did. It worked fine out of the box. The only hiccup I had was the specific type of SD card I was using. So that I think I've worked out. So that's a little bit of a tip. Let me say it again, use HC cards versus XC cards. And I wouldn't go over a 64 gigabyte card. I would use 32 or 16 at the max just because i don't think and again this is just observation nothing too super scientific but i don't think these cameras can handle it the other thing that i noticed with this camera as i was trying to vlog with it that the audio is lagging or does not sync up with the video so you're going to get this type of stuff and it's just a bummer that it does that and i tested it over and over and i couldn't get it to sync up in camera now i was successful on detaching the audio in my video editing software and lining it up and then it works just fine at this price point at around 50 dollars it actually might be worth the hack to line up you have to make that decision but for me and my purposes i will just stick to using the video i'm not going to worry about the audio and I'm just gonna use it as my second and third camera or just when I need unique shots in unique places. All right, let's take a quick look at the menu. All right, in the front, you have a power button. You click it and hold it and it should power on. You'll see it power on in the back. Makes a little chime and gets you to the main screen. You can see that it is on and ready to go. You can click on the record button at the top and it will begin to record. Notice the blinking red indicator there. Many times the screen will go to sleep unless you change the screen for a longer duration to stay on. So you'll click this to wake it up and then click stop. So if you click it once and think you're stopping the camera, you are not. So just know that if the screen has gone blank like it is right now, you want to wake it up just like that and then you can press stop. All right, let's go through the menu items. Let's go to the settings dial. Here you can change the format, what you want. Again, it's at 4K 30 frames per second and you can scroll down and I think it goes down to 720 at 30 frames per second. But there also is a 720 at 120 frames per second. So that's pretty useful for slow motion. And on this camera, I would more than likely utilize the 4K 30 for most of what you're gonna do. But that's a preference thing and that's up to you. Here you can change your exposure, your white balance, your angle. So if you want more of the fisheye look, you can go all the way up to 170 degrees. I was using 70 degrees for a more linear look, but again, that's up to you and what you're looking for. Here's where you would set time-lapse for video. If you wanted a burst photo, you could tell it that you want five frames per second or 10 frames per second. Right now, I'm just gonna turn that off. Click the X to escape. The front button right here, the mode button, acts as more like an input button, like on a television and if you click on it that's camera you can see the camera up in the corner that's all the files that you have on this camera and it takes you into the settings menu and it will actually go through all of those menus you want to escape go ahead and click enter that's what the mode button does it kind of gives you quick access through all of the menus we're back at camera and we're ready to shoot video. Last thing I wanna talk about is early on in the video, you saw that it is waterproof, but it's only waterproof with the housing. This takes you back to the old GoPros. This is the system they use, and it works pretty decently. It just clicks right in there. If you've never used one, slap it in there and click it shut. You're ready to go, you're ready to shoot video. I'll go back to the part of the video where I actually took this underwater and you can see some of the results from this camera. They weren't too shabby, they weren't too shabby. I like what actually both of these cameras did underwater. It's certainly something you could take on holiday or a vacation, let's say to an exotic place, Hawaii and so on. 
because this will record underwater. It does a pretty good job. The battery, they're okay. I didn't do a full exhaustive test on the batteries, but it seemed like about 45 minutes to an hour 15, but it wasn't extensive, constant use. Definitely wanna have extra batteries. This Pro came with two batteries, so that was a plus. When I bought this one originally, the original Dragon Touch, it did not have an extra battery. So again, that's pretty cool that this one came with a second battery. And that's gonna about do it. I kind of like where this video ended up going. If you have any further thoughts on these Dragon Touch Vision 3 cameras and you can provide us with more information down in the comments below, I would love to hear from you. I think this community of Dragon Touch action cam users is actually quite large. And if you don't have any ideas necessarily on why certain SD cards aren't working, leave me a comment down below and tell me what you're doing with your action cams. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you are not a subscriber. I would love for you to be part of this photo and video and filmmaking journey. We can do this together and we can build this community together. Like this video if you liked any part of it. I would certainly appreciate it. Until the next one, love you guys. Peace. My fault, my fault. All right. To la ru la ru. Da -da. Tone death. Okay, one more time. Let's do this. <laughs>